Hi, in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible tells us very clearly that we are saved by grace through faith. Then James 2 tells us that faith without works is dead. Did we just find a contradiction in the Bible? How can that be? Did God lie one time? Perish the thought. Actually, it's very simple. Watch this very short video. Oh, and at the end I will share about a judgment that believers will go through. You're going to be encouraged by it. You probably should STLB or smash the like button after the video. But wait till the video is over. There are over 100 passages in the Bible that clearly tell us that we are saved or have eternal life by putting our trust in Christ as our Savior. See, all of us deserve to go to hell. We all have sinned. We need to be perfect to go to heaven. We got some problems. But there is a solution. Jesus Christ. He took our sins, our shame, our guilt, our punishment, and he died on the cross and rose from the dead. He told us over and over again that if we just trust him as our Savior, we have eternal life. Then in Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, it tells us that salvation is by grace through faith. And then finally, that it's not of works, so that no one could boast. So if you go to heaven and see me there and you go, Wow, look at that, the Dutch guy made it in here. How did he get in here? Let's ask him. Well, I won't say, well, I became a missionary that had a lot of good deeds. I started a YouTube channel and told people to subscribe and SDLB or smash the like button. And then people subscribed and smash the like button. And now I'm here. No, I can only say I deserve to go to hell. But Jesus Christ took my sin. And when I was about eight or nine years old, I trusted him as savior. And now I'm here, totally by his grace. But what about James too? Oh my goodness, it says, faith without works is dead. It's actually very simple. Read the entire chapter. Always a good idea to read things in context. Notice, it's talking about not being partial. They will judge you by your works or your testimony. Besides that, if you took James 2 as an example as to how to be good enough to go to heaven, there are two examples there, Abraham, who tried to sacrifice his son Isaac, and Rahab, who was a prostitute. So if you think you can get saved by these good works, sacrifice your son and become a prostitute. Not exactly the victorious Christian life I was thinking about. I'm sure if you have children, they agree with this video. Also, Abraham, in Romans 4, was clearly shown to be saved by faith alone. So people are going to judge you by your outside good works. Even in Tanakh, or Old Testament, says that in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, Samuel's looking for a new king, and he goes to Jesse in Bethlehem. Jesse brings his very impressive sons in front of him, but leaves the youngest son, David, to take care of the sheep. After all, no one would want this little kid, this shepherd boy now, would they? But God told Samuel that man looks at the outside. They judge from the outside, or our good works, or how good we are looking. But God looks at the heart. God knows if someone has trusted Christ as Savior. When it comes to going into judgment, believers who have trusted Christ as Savior will not go into judgment from God. Christ promises this in John 5, 24. Verily, verily, or amen, amen in Hebrew, he who hears my word and believes on him who sent me has eternal life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. We sing that song here all the time. Now, for the extra. There is some sort of judgment, though, that believers will go through. In 1 Peter 1 verse 2, it says about us, elect according to the foreknowledge, a very important word, by the way, of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Did you catch that? When we meet God, he will see two things when looking at our lives, obedience, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. Ultimately, all that any of us can say is that it's by the blood of Christ that we are saved. But may God see much obedience in our lives too. God bless you. Bye-bye.